Or yeah. Triumph 2. Yeah. We're gonna rock this. to describe a Gilman jazz hound. An impeccable performer, impeccably dressed all the time. Uh, delicious. Yes. Shaping up. Why did you want to get that? Yeah, I like the white meat. I am the innovator, the trendsetter, the legend. That's it. As we made the journey to Philadelphia, we ran into the infamous Orin. We're here. Led by our fearless leader, Yambo Lee, the Gilman Jazz Hounds left the comfort of our kangaroo coach and entered the world of jazz. We were met with regal treatment, our own personal assistant in the warm-up location, and thus the day of jazz began. The Gilman Jazz Hounds found themselves listening to jazz ensembles from around the world, yet all were subpar to Gilman Jazz, of course. Tensions grew high as the Hounds demanded quality jazz. It's my jazz and I want it now! It's my jazz and I want it now. Do you not know how to make a movie? Like, honestly, you're such an abysmal movie. You're such an abysmal movie. It's my jazz and I want it now. But, like, you're not making it's it natural. Recording. You know what we need to do? Stone pictures of gangs fighting and then Mr. Smite saving the day, like, blatantly photoshopped. The hounds set up their instruments and began to warm up. No! Miss and Kaba did her best to whip the jazz hounds into shape. Flat Morgan for me. I can't hit. Him. I'll get fired. And the jazz hounds began the walk of, to glory one step at a time. 
You could cut the tension with a butter knife. The hounds knew after an amazing performance the year prior, the judges would be looking for that extra something. Just left hands off. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to keep on going with this. Next, we have the Gilman School Jazz Ensemble, directed by Ms. Cheryl and Caba. Uh, first, we have Ryan on the blue note, then we have Sunset and a Mockingbird. Next, Tipping on the QT, and finally, Out of the Doghouse. Enjoy. In addition to jazz, some of the hounds felt it necessary to show off some other talents to impress the judges. The day was far from over after the main performance. The jazz hounds still had to be critiqued by the judges as well as participate in a lesson taught by professional jazz players. At this point, Charlie Obrick had experienced his fair share of jazz and proceeded back to the bus, so, uh, where his adventure the began. The bus is blocking the road, and the bus driver is actually in the bathroom right now, and we had someone come up and ask me to move the bus. <laughs> kind of in a sticky situation right here. Do I move it or do I not move it? So, sort of pondering. After a few blocks around the Philadelphia ghetto, a stop at a right aid, and one encounter with the police officer left Charlie exhausted and ready to return home. The jazz hounds had done it. 